Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy, the Aquatic Charizard here. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be discussing five Pokemon that we strongly believe should get Alola forms in the upcoming Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games. In this video, we will be focusing on the Pokemon from the Kanto region. All the artworks in this video are made by Cole Shallow. And my name is Kyugare. In the number 5 spot, we have Krabby and Kingler. This Pokemon is based on a crab, it's, it's kind of obvious. It's just the crab though, just the crab with a BY at the end of the name. So we decided to make an Alolan form for this Pokemon, and the design that we decided on is the Horned Ghost Crab, a species of crab that can be found living on the islands of Hawaii. The Horned Ghost Crab lives on land, primarily in the sand, and it actually cannot even swim. Cool Shallow decided to give it a purplish colored body and some white claws, and as you can see, Krabby's purple body seems to be glowing. When Krabby reaches level 28, it evolves into Alolan Kingler. Alolan Kingler has a similar design to Alolan Krabby, but it has crown-like spikes on their heads just like its Kanto counterpart. Their bigger claw also has markings that make it look like it has eyes and a mouth, kinda like scissors pinches, except the eyes are actually glowing. This is why we thought it would be appropriate to give them the typing of Ghost and Ground. This is due to the nature of the crab as they burrow into the sand and live on beaches but do not actually go into the water or live there. The ghost typing is just a reference to its name as it is the ghost crab so we thought it would just fit well. The abilities we have decided to give it are Hypercutter as their real world counterpart also shares the same one large claw like the original Krabby and Kingler line do. We also thought that they should receive the ability Arena Trap as they build their burrows in the sand which can be used to also trap their enemies so they cannot escape. The move line we have created for these Pokemon will go along with their typing and what we believe suits these Pokemon the best. This includes replacing a lot of their original moves, with mainly ghost type moves as well as more ground type moves like adding Mud Slap in the early levels and Shadow Ball later on. The stats we thought should be changed to be a little more spread than fully focusing on attack stat, as the ghost typing focuses more on ranged moves like Shadow Ball being the most well known move, we thought it would be best to make them have a little less attack and a bit more special attack even though the attack still stays as their prominent stat. We also decided to increase their speed a little as they spend a little more time scurrying through the sand than they do in the water, where they will move slower. Flying in at number 4 is everyone's favorite Pokemon, Venomoth. I'm just kidding, no one likes it. Venomoth is a bug poison type Pokemon that was designed to look like a moth. The Pokemon itself is based on a poisonous moth. Yeah, some of the Pokemon in Generation 1 are not really that creative when it comes to designs. But Cool Shallow was researching some of the mythology of Hawaii and he came across a black witch moth. Myths claim that if a loved one has just died and you happen to see this moth, it is an embodiment of the person's soul returning to say one last farewell. When it comes to the design of Alolan Venomoth, Cool Shallow said he had a hard time designing it due to the difficulty of the pattern design. He gave it a black body and a set of brown wings, and for the antennae he tried to keep it more moth-like. The typing for this Pokemon would be Bug Dark due to the fact that this Pokemon can only be found during nighttime. Venomoth's pre-evolution Venonat will not be receiving an Alolan form, just like how Executor got an Alolan form but Execute didn't. We have decided to give Venomoth the Bug and Dark typing as it is based on the Black Witch Moth which gives it a more dark and sinister presence than its Kanto counterpart. The abilities we have decided to give Venomoth are Tinted Lens and Compound Eyes. The main reason for this is that we do not believe it should have Levitate, as it is not actually floating even though it doesn't have the flying type. It's also because of the eyes that insects have. For instance, the Yama line who have these abilities as well. You know it isn't the most creative, but you want abilities which makes sense. We've made it to where Alolan Venomoth can learn all the moves Venonet will learn up until level 31. But then we changed a few moves to make it more adapted to its dark typing, like adding Dark Pulse into its move pool as well as adding Confuse Ray and Memento into the mix. We did remove the Psychic type moves, like Psychic, as it wouldn't make much sense if it were using moves that it would be immune to and not suited to use. We don't know why it could learn Psychic in the first place, but we didn't create the original. The stats have been changed to increase its HP and defense stats, 
but its attack and speed stat were lowered a little bit. We didn't think it needed that much changing as they're both moths with different body tones, so we thought it would be better to make it more defensive as it uses its camouflage to blend into the scenery of Alola. Look at this girl! Isn't she looking fine? No, she isn't. We all know that she was based off an opera singer, but she looks more like a hooker! So Jinx is based on way too many things from what Cool Shallow found, so we're just gonna list some of Jinx's inspirations. She's based on a female opera singer, a yokai called Yama Uba, a viking goddess of the underworld named Hell, and a specific Santa helper, whose name I couldn't pronounce. Also, Jinx's skin is based on when someone gets frostbite. Jinx's original typing was Ice Psychic. So you're saying that this was based off of this. Whatever. Cool Shallow had an idea for the Alolan form, which was going to be based off of Pele, the goddess of fire in Hawaiian mythology. But he didn't find a good design for it, so he's going to hold it off for a different Pokemon. Hint, hint. Also, Jinx does not deserve to be called a goddess. It just, it just doesn't. We decided on making the Alolan Jinx's design to be based on the typical Hawaiian hula dancer, having a grassy skirt, dark brownish hair, and some can even be found with black hair. Also, they have coconut bras. Seriously, Cool Shadow? Seriously? She looks even more like a hooker! What the hell?! This Jinx is based off of hula dancers, giving it the grass and psychic typing to match its regular design but also to give it the alone and tropical feel to the Pokemon. The abilities we believe Jinx should have are Flower Veil to represent the plants in which it has all over its body. We also believe that it should have the ability Dancer, as it is based off of the hula dancers who are, well, you know, dancers. Make sense? The moveset we have given to Jinx is a mix of its old move pool as well as new moves, as the ice typing has been removed, which is what has been done with most of the Pokemon anyway. This includes adding Leaf Storm to give it a strong grass type move instead of having Blizzard twice, Teeter Dance to match the dancing theme of the Pokemon, and Aromatherapy to give Jinx a support role, which it would be more suited to in the game. The stat changes we have done for Jinx include lowering its speed stat by 10, as well as lowering its special attack, but at the same time we increased its health ever so slightly, as well as improving its special defense. The attack stats stay the same, as we do not think this form would involve it having to change its attack at all. The second to last Pokemon on this list, as well as some of the more brilliantly designed Pokemon, are Horsey and Seedra. Ah, Horsey, the water type Pokemon which has one of the best designs in Generation 1, and it's based on a... a seahorse. Just a seahorse that shoots ink. In the Pokedex, it's classified as the Dragon Pokemon. Other Pokemon with this classification include the Dratini line, Salamence, and your good boy Gudra. But Horsey or Cedar doesn't even become part Dragon type until evolving into Kingdra in Generation 2, so we got a so-called Dragon. Well, let's make that into an actual Dragon! Cool Shallow wanted to make the design to be based off a leafy sea dragon. These species are on the brink of extinction, and they cannot be found in Hawaii, but it can be found in Australia. In Hawaii, they have a leafy sea dragon farm where they breed leafy sea dragons. You can actually go buy one of your own, but you do need a special permit. But that's not all. Each one of these leafy sea dragons costs $6,000. Take it from me, guys, that's really expensive. But at least they're pregnant when you get one, so you actually get babies in the future. Cool. For the design of Alolan Horsey, we tried to make it look like a leafy sea dragon as much as possible. We gave it a yellowish color scheme, gave it a leafy-like dorsal fin, and replaced the head spikes with seaweed-like material. Alolan Horsey trades its pure water typing to become a grass slash water type. You cannot find these Pokemon in the wild, but you can buy one in a marine place in Alola for only 600,000 Poke Dollars! Yeah, that's a lot of money, but it's worth it! After training it and reaching a certain level, it'll evolve into a Lolan Seedra, and then you can trade that Seedra with your friends while it holds a dragon scale to get a Lolan Kingdra. But if you want to see the design for a Lolan Kingdra, you'll just have to make sure you like the video and share it with your friends so Cool Shallow knows that you guys are interested in it for the next video. The reason why these Pokemon are in grass and water types is to become counterparts to Squirrelp and Dragalge, which work as the counterparts to these two Pokemon. This is because Leafy 
seahorses are very prone to pollution. So the horsey line are the ones who are in clean water and the scrope line are adapted to polluted water. The abilities we have decided to give these Pokemon are adaptability and filter. This is because of the example we have given previously. The seahorse counterpart has adapted to each of the different types of waters. They both share the ability adaptability. And filter has been given as the grass typing, which lets them filter the sun's light to give them energy just like regular plants do. Lots of the moves that these Pokemon have in their move pool are the same water type moves that their Kanto counterparts can learn. Apart from those moves, we have decided to add camouflage into their move pool as well as some grass type moves including the three energy draining grass moves as this is actually a primary feature to leafy sea dragons. Yes. If you see dragons, enjoy giving the suck. The stats of these Pokemon match their design quite well. What we did was lower their HP, defense, and special defense of these Pokemon to give them a significant increase to their special attack and speed. This is because the designs depict two frail seahorse creatures compared to the Kanto variants who are a lot bulkier in shape. Our final Pokemon for this video is Voltorb. Voltorb itself is based on a, a Pokeball, which can explode. Seriously, Game Freak? Cool Shallow thought up, what if Voltorb was a sea mine, which he then got the idea for Voltorb's Alolan form. The Alolan Voltorb design resembles floating sea mines without chains holding them down. Alolan Voltorb becomes a steel type Pokemon and its evolution, Alolan Electrode, will be based on the sea mine with the chain. It'll be a lot bigger than the Alolan Voltorb and you can find them underwater if you go deep enough. Alolan Electrode will remain a steel type. The final Pokemon on this list is Alolan Voltorb and Alolan Electrode. These Pokemon are based on sea mines, probably because Hawaii has its own military base. We thought this would be better to be pure steel rather than steel water, just because it's a mine. It's in water, but it has no water in it, therefore it shouldn't be part water. The abilities we have given to these Pokemon are clear body as they are pure steel and nothing else. We also gave Voltorb light metal as it is floating on top of the water rather than below it. We gave Electrode bulletproof as another reference to the military style steel used and sea bombs. The moves we have given to these Pokemon are mostly steel related. This gave us the freedom to use a lot of explosion type moves, which are an explosion, like Magnet Bomb and Metal Burst, as these suit the Pokemon quite well. He also gave Electrode Anchor Shot because of the massive chain attached to it which would allow it to attack with the chain, making it more useful than just for aesthetics. The stats for these Pokemon have changed the most compared to their Kanto counterparts. Because they are just floating in or on top of the water, there isn't much use for the speed of these designs, which made us want to reduce the speed stat but at the same time improve the defenses of these Pokemon, as that is what Steel Typing is known for. Well guys, these are the five Alolan forms of Kanto Pokemon that we would like to see in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. If you liked this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more. Also, comment down below what Alolan forms you guys want to see. And thank you Kushalo for bringing us here to talk about these Alolan forms that you have made. See you guys later. Peace!